Sometimes you find something in a video game that makes you think, uh, where's the shredder? This is why today we're diving into 10 video game discoveries that were never meant to be found. Part 6. Horizon Forbidden West. Thanks to Diver Gent on YouTube for submitting this discovery on OddHair.com. Horizon Forbidden West released early in 2022 as a sequel to one of my favorite games, Horizon Zero Dawn. The sequel introduces a number of mechanics to the robot dinosaur hunting adventure, and like its predecessor, already features a number of discoveries never meant to be found. Diver Gent has managed to find yet another, although this one may just be the most mysterious of them all, as Diver Gent was playing a disc copy of the game on version 1.0, so they could use a glitch with the shield wing that allowed them to fly around instead of only gliding downward like it normally does. A glitch that was removed from the game with patch 1.09. Diver Gent was flying up over these mountains where they could see over the edge of the world, when suddenly they noticed a word painted in the sky. Ara la. Even stranger, the message is only visible at night and at a specific altitude, making it even more unclear what its purpose is supposed to be. While it seems like Ara la could be the name of a person, location, or even possibly a prescription drug, it doesn't appear to have any sort of meaning either in the game or in the real world when searched online. Considering the conditions of this thing and that you have to see it at just the right angle. Diver Gent is one hell of a lucky dude for uncovering this one at all. Now if we just be lucky enough to uncover what the hell it means. Rage. Thanks to Pepper for submitting this discovery through the OddHair Discord. Rage is a post-apocalyptic first-person shooter released in 2011 from developer id Software. The game was praised at release for having incredible visuals for 2011. However, it could have been less fondly remembered if the file Pepper found in the data actually made it into the game. As Pepper found under Do Not Distribute AI Stuck is none other than the Hamster Dance song, which for those lucky enough not to know, was one of the very first internet memes. And as you can probably tell, one of the most annoying songs of all time. While the song is disabled in the final game, from the name AI Stuck we can tell it was most likely used during development to indicate to developers when the enemy AI got stuck in the environment, and there was no way bugs were going unnoticed if they had to put up with this sh**. Guess now we know why the developers called this game Rage. Shrek Super Slam. Thanks to Sky for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header Discord. Shrek Super Slam is a 2005 title for six generation consoles that straight up Smash Brothers with Shrek. A game that, considering Shrek's prestige and meme culture, would probably be a huge hit today. In 2005, though, players saw the game for pretty much what it is, which was a rather unmemorable and awkward Smash clone without Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, or Cameron Diaz. An interesting discovery, though, was made on the PlayStation 2 version of the game, as a file was found in the data that was actually the entirety of Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Mix. Not a particularly shocking find considering Shaba Games was a developer on both titles. But what's interesting about this is this version of Tony Hawk's Underground 2 Remix is actually an unreleased version of the game, dated after the game's original release, with a number of fixes and improvements made to the game, such as skaters' heads no longer being cut off on the character select screen. One big improvement is the fact that two of the game's hidden characters exclusive to Remix are actually unlockable now, which I remember as a kid spending hours trying to unlock them by fully completing the Atlanta level and being ticked when nothing happened. If only I bought Shrek Super Slam and ripped the newer version of Underground Remix that was hidden on the disc. That could have been two games for the price of one, though honestly the amount of time I'd spent on one of them was probably slim to nut. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The Witcher 3 has been covered quite a few times on the channel for various discoveries that have been all sorts of creepy and awkward. However, the game's next-gen update at the end of 2022 included what was most likely the most shocking discovery to date, as players were stunned to realize, along with countless new features such as ray tracing and improved 60 frames per second gameplay. The update was also sure to add fully detailed lady gardens underneath the female character's clothes, some of which were even intricately landscaped with a landing strip, which obviously I can't show here, but I think you get the idea. Which was extremely odd considering before the update the female characters down there resembled Barbie without any discernible features in the area. Developer CD Projekt Red immediately patched out the offending bits after it caused a stir in the community, explaining that they were unintended as the next gen update had utilized some fan made mods and explained it was specifically because of the HD Monsters rework mod that they used, as the modder included a different kind of reworking that the developers were definitely not expecting. Though honestly, when CD Projekt Red decided to source material from a fairly detail oriented modder, you would have thought this be the first thing they check. Grand Theft Auto 5. In the decade that the game has been out, Grand Theft Auto 5 still hasn't stopped surprising players with an endless stream of crazy discoveries since the game came out in 2013. This time, Twitter user Lucas's personal discovered something for the first time in July of 2022, nine years after the game's release, that we were most definitely never supposed to see. As in the mission Father Son, when Michael and Franklin chase after the stolen yacht on the back of a truck, there's some vehicles in the date of the chase scene that don't appear to be anywhere, as their graphics appear to be the 
disabled. Enabling them reveals that the yacht isn't the only thing Michael and Frank are chasing, as they're also tailing two floating trucks suspended in mid-air, one on the highway next to them and the other flying through the air. What the f***? Were these guys watching us the entire time? It's unknown why exactly Rockstar decided to use trucks here that can't normally be seen, but they are mounted where the cinematic cameras are supposed to be during the scene, meaning they're probably indicators for where the cameras are supposed to be. No idea why they used flying 18 wheelers, but I guess if you were looking to track their position, you're certainly not going to miss that. It really makes me wonder what kind of other things we just haven't discovered. Though of all the other things floating in front of our faces that we haven't yet revealed, this one could actually be pretty tame. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Party Edition. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Party Edition released only in Europe in 2006 for the PlayStation 2, PSP, and Windows. It's your pretty standard game show tie-in, where players emulate the show by answering trivia questions for a chance to win a fake 1 million pounds. Unless trivia is your thing, it's not particularly exciting. So I'm not really sure how it got dubbed the Party Edition. Unless you were to take a look at the files, which contain unused outtakes from Chris Tarrant, the host of the UK version of the show who also provided his voice for the game as Taren apparently has some unkind things to say to players who wanted to dip out early. Well, it seems a shame that you're leaving this early, but if you don't know the answer, it's your choice. F*** me, you are thick. Come back soon to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, You Dim Bastard. Excuse me? Not the kind of words you expect to hear from a cheeky old chap like Taren. Though considering some of these questions, he may have had a point. Drakengard. Drakengard is a series by eccentric game designer Yoko Taro, which eventually spun into the Nier series that led to the explosively popular Nier Automata. Long before that though, Drakengard released on PlayStation 2 in Japan in 2003 and internationally in 2004, which was essentially a Dynasty Warriors clone during an ancient religious war between two factions, with the addition of aerial combat with a dragon. Strangely though, in the files of the game, someone was discovered hiding who may have been the one to end the war once and for all as it was discovered under file 12 underscore kime dot fpk could be found a model of neo from the matrix it's unclear why exactly neo shows up in the medieval setting except to possibly give the characters the choice of leaving their simulated realities and seeing the real world for what it is to finally join the rage against machines there's also this cat model in the game which i have no idea what that is Recoil. Recoil is a vehicular combat tank game released by EA in 1999 for Windows. The game has players drive an experimental tank through a dystopian world dominated by Megacorp, a technology company whose tanks have become human killing machines, and now it's your job to take them down. Recoil isn't very well remembered, except by its fans who recall the game for its explosive gameplay. Something, however, was discovered in the files that will be sure to make you remember Recoil after you see it. As for some reason, in the date of the game is an image of a woman leaving little to the imagination. There doesn't appear to be any people running around during the game, so I'm not sure where exactly this would appear. Then again, I don't see who's driving the tank either, so I guess whoever's at the controls could just be a bare-ass lady who prefers to go to battle in true commando style, or someone on the development team just got really carried away. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Grand Ages Medieval. Thanks to Lexi for submitting this discovery on the Oddheader Discord. Grand Ages Medieval is a 2015 real-time medieval strategy game where players begin as a simple merchant with the ultimate goal of taking over all of Europe. A real starting from the bottom situation. The game pushes players to focus on using economics to gain control of regions rather than using your army. But critics panned it for being overly complicated. However, Lexi found something in Grand Ages that seems to complicate things even further. As inside the game's churches is something that doesn't seem to belong anywhere in the year 1050 as by clicking the pray feature on the church, you could wait around for over a minute after the prayer is over and hear audio of a large door open and a mysterious guest footstep slowly entering the church. When you suddenly hear, A Giovanni. A Giovanni? The guy then proceeds to speak in what sounds like Italian. And what sounds like the cocking of a gun. Uh, that does not sound like a weapon from 1050. Giovanni responds in... What's wrong with him? What is that, an alien? Eventually we hear what sounds like an explosion and the church bell collapsing. Damn. Rest in peace, Giovanni. 
Shadow of the Colossus. Thanks to Niep for submitting this through the Onheader Discord. Shadow of the Colossus is the highly regarded 2005 PlayStation 2 exclusive, but cited as a huge influence on the industry, having been remastered in 2011 for the PlayStation 3 and remade and re-released again in 2018 for the PlayStation 4, with some still hoping for another release on PlayStation 5. Players, however, found in the PlayStation 4 remake of the game by Bluepoint Games something they maybe were never supposed to find. In the game, you reach different corners of the long, expansive open world so you can find and take down Colossi minding their own business so you can rescue a dead girl you know nothing about. The world is so large and lonely, players speculated for years that the game held one final secret, believing that a bricked up door would reveal the final Colossus, which didn't actually have anything behind it at all. The 2018 remake, however, made mention in the credits of a YouTuber named Nomad Colossus, who's over the years documented many Shadow of the Colossus areas that were never meant to be found, which ended up being a clue to find coins scattered around the environment, eventually opening a compartment outside the Shrine of Worship, only to find a sword that reflects darkness instead of light, which wasn't really any different from your normal sword and actually upset a bit of the community. Despite this, the community continued to search for more secrets and ended up finding something odd. As players managed to find goat drawings in four extremely obscure and hidden locations across the environment. What these goats can mean is still a subject of speculation today, with some believing it may be part of the game's still unsolved final secret. Some believe the locations of the goats even form the shape of a pentagram, which could only mean we may need to find another goat to perform some sort of sacrifice. Nomad Colossus, however, said they talked to Blue Point's president Marco Thrush, who said the goats were placeholders to show where the developers were supposed to place certain assets and forgot to remove them, meaning that these goat drawings were never actually meant to be found. The thing is, is, if that was supposed to be the purpose, why would you use goat drawings that blend in so easily with the environment? To me, it seems hard to believe these were intended as obvious indicators to developers to put something there. As I've shown many times before, if you want to get a developer's attention, it tends to be a little more obvious. Plus, these goats seem to be strangely part of the game world. Some goats were also spotted hiding in Bluepoint's Demon Souls remake, and Bluepoint even put out a now deleted tweet before its release that was just an image that said title, with fast loading and a picture of a cabbage in the corner. Apparently referencing a reset era member who said they'd just take a black screen with a title for the next game or else they'd eat an entire raw cabbage. Strangely though, it was found if you adjusted the exposure of the image, you'd get this. Not sure what the hell's going on here, but maybe the whole thing really is just an inside joke that doesn't mean anything at all. Well, in that case, I guess we won't be killing any goats. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you know of anything else in video games that weren't meant to be found, submit through oddhair.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout through Twitter or Reddit. And thanks again to Slippy Slides for helping me get the footage in this video. Feel free to subscribe to him down below as well. Shout out to Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Bitwith27, Chad Biscuits, Ed Moffat, Eddie Talkspin the Bleach Primid, Flex, Fox M Cloud123, J1221J, Miss Arctic Foxy, Rackman22, Red Team Medic, Riley S, Robert Eisen, Rolkot Mifula, Starcore2, Tenryu Uyarnet, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, and Chalzy for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.